Good morning to you. <clears throat> this morning I'm going to attempt to take another skills assessment test. I'm going for the HTML skills assessment test. So first I log in to LinkedIn and I click on my profile. I scroll down until I can see skills. Take skill quiz. Click on that and there you go you can see i can see html all right so the html assessment will cover basic structure forms global attributes multimedia and semantics so let's go ahead and get started okay what is the purpose of the samp element okay it identifies enclosed text as a sample or an example. It identifies sample output from a computer program. It specifies sample values for a form field. It uses simple application messaging protocol to connect the browser to a texting device. I'm going to go with it specifies sample values for a form field. What is the best semantic markup for these instructions? How to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. One, get a sliced bread, peanut butter and jelly. Okay. So, you've got a header, you've got a paragraph, and they seem to put all the things in order. Then you have uh, this H1, which is your header, a UL and a LI. Okay. Um, the next one you have a header, a OL and an LI. And then finally you got a header and you've got breakers here. So if I have to really choose, it would either be between this one and this one the UL and the LI or the OL and LI so I'm gonna go with OL since OL normally means ordered list so I'm gonna choose that option when should you use the article element Okay, to associate comments with a blog post for blog posts and other social media items for the main content area of your website uh, when the content stands alone as a unit is suitable for syndication or is reusable. I'm going to go with uh, for the main content of your website. You want to have single spacing in between some lines, like in a poem or an address. Which approach should you use? Wrap the text in a box that is the right width, so everything wraps correctly. Set the box width with CSS. Separate the lines with the BR tag. Use the PRE tag to make the line spacing look exactly like you want separate lines with a P and then use CSS to make single spacing. I'm going to go with BR because that's normally the break line. What is the purpose of a sync in this code? Okay. Script a sync source myscript.js and then script Okay, it runs a script with the script is ready. It pauses the passing of HTML code while the script runs. It runs the script after HTML passing is complete. It downloads the script from the server when resources allow. I'm going to say it runs the script when the script is ready. What is the correct way to code a link that, when linked, when clicked, will send an email to email at example.com with a subject of hello? 
Okay, so this has got your ahref, which is your link, and then it's saying the mail to, then it's giving a subject here, and then it's got the click me. Okay, this one's just got the simple mail to. This one's got the question mark, so this is the option I'm going to go with over here. What is the best semantic markup for this sentence? As Steve Krug once said, happy talk must die. So if I have a look here, it's saying a paragraph, then it wants to make it bold. I don't see any bold over here. It says a paragraph, and then I think this is a quote. And then it says paragraph and italic. Um, and then this one's a paragraph block quote. I'm going to go with this one over here with the block quote. What does the poster attribute do in the video tag? It specifies an image that should display until the video is played. It specifies an image that only displays if there is a problem with the video. It specifies an image that should display while the video downloads. It specifies an image that should display while the video downloads and until the video is played. I'm going to go with this option. It, is spe it specifies an image that should display while the video downloads. What is the purpose of the class attribute? Classes allow CSS and JavaScript to select specific elements on the page. You may list only one class name per class attribute. Classes allow CSS and JavaScript to select specific elements on the page. You may list as many class names within the class attribute as you wish, separated by spaces. Classes allow CSS to select specific elements on the page. You may list only one class name per class attribute. Classes allow CSS to select specific elements on the page. You may list as many class names with the class attribute as you wish, separated by spaces. So I'm going to go with, it allows CSS and JavaScript to select specific elements on the page per class attribute. I think you can list as many uh, elements on the page. You may list as many names within the class attribute as you wish, separated by spaces. Uh, don't recall, I'm going to choose this first one. Don't recall any spaces and classes. Which choice uses the correct terminology in describing this markup? P info P. The start tag is P and the end tag is forward slash P and the element content is info. Start tag is P, the end tag is forward slash P and then closed HTML is info. The element opener is P and the element closer is forward slash P and the element information is info. The start element is P, the end element is P, and the tag content is info. Hmm, I'm going to go with the tag content is info. Should I say element? Uh, smart start tag. Now, yeah, let's stick with that. What is the difference between the SVG and the canvas tag? SVG produces vector graphics while Canvas produces raster graphics. SVG produces raster graphics while Canvas produces vector graphics. SVG cannot be used as a background image while Canvas can be used as a background. SVG integrates with JavaScript while Canvas does not. I'm going to go with uh, vector graphics because that's what I understand about SVG files. What is the purpose of caption? Caption provides captions for audio, video, image and table. Caption provides captions to table. Caption provides um, captions for image, audio and video. 
Um, yeah, I'm gonna just choose image, video, audio, and video. Don't think it applies for tables. Which snippet of HTML, when clicked, makes a phone call on a mobile device? Hmm, okay. I would go with this phone. Um, although, this is a tell. But yeah, let's call me. Let's try this one. What does this code do? Audio, autoplay, loop, source is sound mp3, type is audio mpeg, and forward slash audio. The browser plays the sound automatically and continuously in the background. The user has no control over it. When the play button is pressed, the browser plays the sound over and over again until the user stops it. The browser plays the sound automatically and continuously in the background. The user may stop the sound at any time. The browser plays the sound once automatically in the background. The user has no control over the sound. Well, at the moment, I don't see that he's got any control. So it's automatic and continuously. Yeah. And that's the option I'm going with. Review the code below. What is the best way to nest a two cell table inside of cell two? A two cell table inside of cell two. So you've got a table and you've got your uh, TR record and then this is your TD. So let's see. It's a table, TR, okay, cell 2, cell A and B, cell 2, table, TR, mm. PD, TR, table. Table T R T D. I think I'm going to choose this one over here. Inside, you want to place it inside of cell two. Okay. So that's my choices. Ah, I didn't earn a badge. You scored higher than thirty-nine percent. But you need to score in the top 30. So thank you for watching. This is a failed attempt at HTML assessment. But at least I've taken it. Goodbye.